coming up on Ag Week TV. We'll introduce you to a farmer who says skip the GPS and the auto steer. He's going old school on his farm. Area pinto bean growers are coming off a record season, but a rainy summer could change things this year. And we'll hear how low commodity prices have lawmakers already thinking about changes to the next farm bill. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Shauna Olson. Farmers are struggling amidst the downturn in the commodity cycle. Corn prices are below break-evens and soybeans are back under 10 bucks. That's more than $2 off their highs. That set the tone for farmers attending Farm Fest this week in southwest Minnesota. Ag Week's Michelle Rook has more. I'm Michelle Rook. Low commodity prices dominated the discussion among farmers here at Farm Fest, and some lawmakers are even talking about writing the farm bill early in response. Speaking at Farm Fest, House Ag Ranking member Colin Peterson told farmers he understands their situation and doesn't think the current farm bill is an adequate safety net since it was written in a time of high prices. At the time we passed it, I complained about the way it was going. I thought it was a mistake. You know, frankly, we'd be better off if we'd have kept direct payments, you know, than what we'd have got. The inadequacy of the farm program has Peterson, as well as other farm leaders, talking about moving up the timeline for writing a new farm bill. But I think this winter is going to be a big problem. And if it gets bad enough, it might force us to move a year early on the farm bill, which wouldn't be a bad idea. I think uh, Colin's on the right track. Uh, everything is made to be amended. Uh, based on the times and the conditions we're living in and hopefully uh, they'll be able to pick it up early and move something forward to assist the producers. The low prices are obvious at shows like Farm Fest where farmers are looking but not buying new technology or equipment. Three dollar corn right now, local elevator price, uh, that just doesn't work uh, for farmers today with land costs being what they are, input costs being what they are. And while he's not calling it a crisis, Fredrickson says it is a challenging time for farmers and it could be for a while. At Farm Fest, I'm Michelle Work reporting for Ag Week. Peterson says they're just beginning to meet with farm and commodity groups about the next farm program to see if they have any recommendations. The big questions are, how long will this ag reset last and what are the best strategies to get through it? Dr. David Cole, an ag economist at Virginia Tech, spoke in Fargo recently. He says the reset could go until 2023, depending on the economies of emerging nations like China as well as energy prices. Cole says other key variables are the strong U.S. dollar and the weather. He has some advice to help farmers get through this. I've got uh, four things that they must be doing. Uh, they've got to plan, strategize, execute, and monitor. Monitoring financial performance. Here's our projected cash flow. Here's our actual. And occasionally throughout the year, tweak and make adjustments. Going to be very, very critical for their success. And obviously, in the last three, four years, uh, the ag sector in the area has, has uh, had its challenges. Uh, a lot of guys have not found profitability in a few years and so forth. So what we're looking at is, is more on the management end. I mean, do you have a marketing plan? Do you have accrual earnings? I mean, do you know where you're making or losing your money? Or uh, do you have a plan for returning to profitability? Cole says the good news is that farmers have low loan interest rates that aren't likely to increase more than a percent in a year. Pinto beans are a key ingredient in many popular Mexican foods and consumer demand is high in the U.S. and around the world. That's good news for growers in North Dakota and Minnesota, where 60% of the nation's pinto beans are produced. Ag Week TV's Rose Dunn was at Central Valley Bean Co-op's annual meeting and joins us now with the outlook for pinto beans. Shana, last year was a record one for the co-op. Although prices were lower, production was high, so profits followed. But that could change this year. Although prices are up, heavy rains and hail are putting a damper on the crop for many. 
pinto beans are big in this part of the world, but the biggest pinto bean growing part of the region has also been hit hardest by some of this summer's worst weather. Kind of a mixed bag. We got, uh, you know, a nice crop generally south of number two and maybe west of 32. And then we got that northeast corner of the state that's been hit by a lot of rain and hail. Fugleston can't yet predict the amount of lost by harvest time, but he's guessing at least 10 to 15 percent. They don't take the moisture like the soybeans do. They bruise up easily from the hail. They're very delicate that way. We, we got a sizable loss there, no doubt. Kevin Sandrell has about 300 acres of pinto beans near Buxton. He's been growing them for about 10 years. It's a nice crop because we get it off early, and it's, you know, we get, we get the weed off and go right into beans, so it's really nice that way. And, gives us a little break before sugar beets and soybeans. This year, he's one of the lucky ones whose crop hasn't been rained out yet. It looks nice. We're real fortunate in our area. We've missed all the heavy rain and storms, so the beans look good. Some of your neighbors maybe not so lucky? Yes, it's really close to us. We're real fortunate to be in an area that's been missed. Central Valley has elevators across North Dakota, and then all the beans are brought to Buxton for processing and shipping. Most of the beans are sold domestically, with much of the crop going to restaurants. In fact, pretty much every bean eaten at a Mexican fast food restaurant was grown here. But this year, crop shortfalls in Mexico and South America meant a big increase in exports. But the big question is, will growers make money on them this year? If you got a good crop, yeah, you should. It's just so many people have got uh, a crop that's probably too big to collect insurance, but not enough to make a profit. The pinto bean harvest will start in late August or early September. Up next on Ag Week TV, a look inside Monsanto's biggest ag research facility. See how they're working to improve farming and food for the world. My name is Joel Kaler, owner operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgewood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called a cornstalk guide. It helps guide corn stalks into the grabs in the chains a lot smoother without losing corn. The corn stalk, when it comes off of our product, it's already on the gathering chain instead of being able to hit that idler. Our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. Okay, all you lefsa makers, it's time to boil potatoes and roll that dough. Home of Economy is looking for the region's best tasting lefsa to compete in the Hostfest Lefsa Masters this fall. Home of Economy is your home of lefsa, and as an official pre qualifier, we're conducting lefsa contests at six of our North Dakota stores. Each top winner advances to Hostfest for a chance to be crowned the Lefsa Master. So grab your apron and register online at homeoflefsa.com. Bigger than hockey in the state of hockey. It's the Minnesota State High School Clay Target League, and it's the fastest growing high school sport in Minnesota. Watch as we follow along with some of the best shooters in the state. You might be surprised at who we find. Then we travel to Clear Lake, Wisconsin, where we see the bond between man and his hunting dog grow stronger in the off season. That's this week on Northland Outdoors. In today's marketplace, maximizing your harvest is more valuable than ever. Improve the efficiency of your operation by adding a Crary Air Reel to your harvester today. A continuous stream of high velocity air quickly feeds crop back to the auger, getting your crop off the cutter bar and into the header. This minimizes shattering and reduces the amount of header loss. At harvest time, every second counts and every bean counts, so you can count on Crary. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? Ag Week Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. If you grow food or eat it, Monsanto is a part of your life. 
The Ag Giants Research Center in St. Louis is home to 1,700 ag researchers. Jonathan Knudsen had the chance to visit the facility where he found them developing technology to help farmers produce more and waste less. Monsanto may be the world's most controversial company. It's important to anyone who cares about crops and the food they eat. I was selected for a National Press Foundation fellowship on food and egg. The four-day event allowed me to meet Monsanto's top leaders and to tour the company's cutting-edge research center in St. Louis. Agriculture is probably the last large industry in the world to be digitized and now we're seeing all kinds of advances from satellite images to sensors in the soil to data algorithms that will give farmers you know better information and advice on, on how to improve you know, yields and production on their farm. So it's an exciting time, uh, it's a challenging time. I'm optimistic and, and excited about the potential we have to farm better and smarter and address both food security and enhance our environment. Monsanto says it wants to feed the world, it wants to help farmers, and it wants to earn consumers' trust. Like you, I'll be watching to see if that happens. For Egg Week, I'm Jonathan Knudsen. Jonathan toured Monsanto as part of a National Press Foundation fellowship. The Wheat Quality Council's annual spring wheat tour of the region shows above average yields and better quality than predicted. The hard red spring wheat yields are running about 45 bushels an acre, down from nearly 50 bushels an acre in 2015. Durham is predicted at 45 bushels an acre, that's up six bushels an acre from last year. If that holds, it will be a record year for Durham. Meanwhile, hard red winter wheat is pegged at just under 35 bushels an acre, down nearly 30% from last year. The council's executive director says the protein content should be higher because of the drought stress in much of the crop. That should increase the value of the crop. Soil health has been an issue for thousands of years. Tom DeSutter is a soil science professor at NDSU. He's working on a project to help find ways to improve soil health and productivity near Delamere, North Dakota. He gave us an in-depth look at a field with a major sodium problem. Soils that are negatively impacted by sodium will disperse, uh, they will swell, which reduces the movement of water. And when they dry, they become extremely hard set. So roots have a very difficult time of penetrating these sodic layers. So what we're doing is using alfalfa as a nurse crop to help improve the structure of the soil to increase in water infiltration, which will then increase soil health. The project is funded by corn and soybean groups. The heat is on. How long will it hang around? Your Ag Week forecast is next. And later, a local company is unveiling an app that will take farming to the next level of technology. Coming out August 29th, don't miss the 2016 Ag Week directory inside your Ag Week magazine. This publication is a resource of services and information. The 2016 Ag Week directory, find it August 29th. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Skag, the toughest name in lawnmowers. Unmatched quality and performance for over three decades. The clear choice, the best mower money can buy for work or at home. Top lawn care professionals and discerning homeowners know that Skag means productivity and reliability. Every Skag mower is proudly built right here in the USA. Don't settle for anything less than simply the best. Skag. Contact your nearest dealer or call North Country Marketing. Bigger than hockey in the state of hockey. It's the Minnesota State High School Clay Target League, and it's the fastest growing high school sport in Minnesota. Watch as we follow along with some of the best shooters in the state. You might be surprised at who we find. Then we travel to Clear Lake, Wisconsin, where we see the bond between man and his hunting dog grow stronger in the off season. 
That's this week on Northland Outdoors. This is Dennis Beliski reminding you we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. Ag Week, the region's premier ag publication, is giving you a chance to win your own drone. When you are at Dakota Fest August 16th through the 18th, make sure to stop by booth 2203 to meet the Ag Week staff and register to win a DJI Phantom 4 drone. Ag Week TV weather is brought to you by Kaler Farms. One thing is different about this summer than the way I was expecting it to turn out is that we have not seen the areas of extremely dry conditions over the northern plains expand in the way that I was really expecting them to, largely because in July we just had a lot of rainfall, and that's also knocked down the temperatures a bit. And with the pattern setting up for August, I think, again, we're going to see a little less of the hot weather into the northern plains than I was expecting. Let's check drought monitor this week. It's still basically soil conditions. There's some dry pockets and some wet areas, but there are no areas of really serious drought anywhere. It's a little dry in southeast North Dakota, northeast South Dakota, where the rains have kind of missed this area. And it, of course, remains extremely dry back in the Black Hills region, but that's not an agricultural area. Corn Belt wise, Michigan, northern Ohio remains quite dry. These areas are in moderate drought stage, but over most of the rest of the upper Midwest, there are areas that are favorably dry or favorably moist or some spots a little too dry, but nothing too extreme. We do have serious drought ongoing in portions of the southeast and in much of southern California. It continues. Forecast for this week. It's kind of an interesting week. The heat wave ridge that I was talking about last week did build up, but it only gave a few days of really hot weather into the uh, nation's uh, Corn Belt areas, and the heat is really being suppressed more further to the south. And with the pattern setting up this week, there will be some warm weather in the Corn Belt at first, but a large low pressure trough in the Rocky Mountain states will keep sending that hot weather a little further southward. So first part of the week, it's going to be warm across the Corn Belt, but then we'll start experiencing some cooling and the hot weather will drop southward. Mild weather will come into the northern plains and it may stay for a while. So we're not going to see as much hot weather, at least through the middle part of August in the north, than I have been anticipating. Here's your forecast then. This week, Dry weather will continue out west. Now the areas which are clear, that doesn't mean there won't be any rain, it just means kind of normal, scattered, unpredictable stuff. What I'm talking about here is for stormy, is for some areas of concentrated heavy rains, the Gulf Coast area, and I think parts of southern Minnesota, maybe northern Iowa through the Great Lakes, is looking fairly stormy for this week. The temperatures will start out fairly warm in the Corn Belt and High Plains, but as that low pressure uh, area begins to take over, it's going to turn fairly mild here across the northern plains. The second week, also really not looking that hot. I think the really hot weather will drop down south and as far as rain it'll continue to be stormy along the Gulf. There will be areas of the northern plains that will remain fairly stormy. Subtropical moisture coming into the southwest will bring some rains to places like Arizona, but the only really concern about agriculture will be parts of northern Iowa and Minnesota. So overall we're talking about weather not quite as hot going through the middle part of August. Some scattered locally heavy rains and some of that will be in the upper Midwest, but overall less heat means less crop stress than we've been expecting this month. Commitment. You need it to succeed on the farm. It's total dedication to the land, family, and community. It's more than a way to make a living. It's a way of life. You've had it since the first time you ran your hands through the soil, helped bale hay, or rode along in the combine. Your commitment. It's as strong as your family's trust, as honest as each long day you put in, and as pure as the opportunity that comes with every tomorrow. It's how we build our bins. With proven design, superior structural integrity, a lifetime warranty, and a promise to stand with you no matter what storms come your way. The harvest will always be protected, so you can sell when it's right for you, your family, 
and your farm. Commitment. It's why we can say there's nothing standard about Superior. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. This is unacceptable and something Feeding America is working to solve. Through a nationwide network of food banks, Feeding America serves virtually every community in the United States, including yours. See how you can help your community. Visit feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Technology and apps are making our lives easier in many ways, and that's true on the farm as well. Arthur Companies will soon unveil an app that will change how farmers do business. Kevin Wallavind explains. Farmer Chase Nelson rolls up to the elevator with a load of grain today at Arthur Company. This afternoon, seed wheat. Yeah, it looks really nice. When Chase and other farmers unload the harvest, the grain is tested and checked for moisture, protein. And Arthur Companies then gives that information to the farmer, a hard copy. They'll get this right here, exact same thing. And accessible on the computer. But now what change? Tech and agriculture has really exploded the last few years. Myriad Mobile of Fargo has designed an app that allows farmers with Arthur Companies to have all that data any time, any place on their phones. Everybody has got a cell phone nowadays and everybody wants information at their fingertips and agriculture is no different. Farmers actually tend to adopt things a little bit faster than most people think. Ryan Ragus of Myriad grew up on a farm, hauled grain and knows technology is rapidly changing even when it comes to grain hauling. Just being able to have that information ready will allow you to probably make more money as a farmer. What this means for Chase and other farmers is they could be in a combine, in a small town cafe, or on the beach in Bora Bora and still know what's going on with their crop. Yeah, I mean, that's the big picture. So if, uh, if this helps us see things faster, you can make money faster. Back in 1906, customers brought grain to this elevator in Arthur by horse and wagon. Now, today, grain by the semi-loads and a phone to tell you all about it. The next phase for the mobile app will include precise ways farmers track their input costs for fertilizer, fuel, and seed. We'll introduce you to a producer who farms old school style, next. Coming out August 29th, don't miss the 2016 Ag Week directory inside your Ag Week magazine. This publication is a resource of services and information. The 2016 Ag Week Directory. Find it August 29th. My name is Joel Kaler, owner operator of Kaler Farms in Lidgewood, North Dakota. We make a patented product called a cornstalk guide. It helps guide corn stalks into the grabs in the chains a lot smoother without losing corn. The corn stalk, when it comes off of our product, it's already on the gathering chain instead of being able to hit that idler. Our product will keep all the wear off the snout and get it to come into the head smoother without bouncing. You make me wear my bike helmet. You taught me never to run with scissors. And to follow the swimming rules. You tell me to stay away from drugs. To always buckle my seatbelt. So why do you keep a loaded gun in your drawer? How safe is that? You ask them to follow some safety rules, now they're asking you. In fact, they're counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. North Dakota soybean farmers put food on tables all over the world, including their own. 
That's why it's important that we produce healthy, safe, affordable food. It's also important that we keep up with demand. Today's farmer feeds 155 people per year. Compare that to a farmer only two generations ago who produced enough for just 26. Most North Dakota farms are still family owned and operated because our care of the land that feeds the world today is our children's legacy for tomorrow. It's time to demand more. With microessentials, you get more from every acre. Through our fusion technology, only Microessentials combines four vital nutrients into one powerful granule, ensuring uniform nutrient distribution and increased nutrient uptake. The innovation behind our fusion technology means you'll grow stronger, healthier plants. Microessentials, get more from every acre. Ag, the region's premier ag publication, is giving you a chance to win your own drone. When you are at Dakota Fest August 16th through the 18th, make sure to stop by booth 2203 to meet the Ag Week staff and register to win a DJI Phantom 4 drone. For many producers, keeping up with the latest technology and equipment is all the rage. But that's not the case for one farmer we found near Christine, North Dakota. It looks like it's pretty good and I think the protein is at least average. The color is good on the wheat this year okay. and all the crops are doing pretty good. Randy Rader is like any other producer. He takes good care of his crops. Have had a little trouble harvesting this year because it's been so rainy and cloudy and whatever. And but Randy Rader isn't like most producers. He started farming in 1980 on his own. I don't know which is more antique, the farmer or the machinery. <laughs> and still has some of the same equipment. You won't find the latest and greatest machinery. People say, how come you have such crooked rows and I say, well, you get more seed in the crooked rows. Or technology here. When I go to town, the people say, why don't you buy some new stuff? Drive that old junky stuff, we can't get parts for it, you know? So sometimes I have to go to the junkyard in South Dakota to get parts. This combine? You no, know, this is from the mid 70s here. We have two of these. And this truck? 1968. That's our oldest truck that we use for grain. The newest one I have is a 79, so that's probably about the newest of anything that I have. We have a 1950 Ford truck and people stopped me. The one day the, a lady came up to the field and, and she was taking pictures and I thought she was taking pictures of the sunset. So then I said, well, wait a minute, I'll move the truck out of the way for you. And she said, no, I'm trying to take a picture of the truck too. But it all gets the job done and it's all equipment Randy can work on himself. Well, that's the thing about this old stuff, you can still fix this. This week's photo of the week comes from Curtis Brown. It's a beautiful shot of his cow-calf pears on the pasture at the ranch near Montpelier, North Dakota, earlier this summer. He says they've been very fortunate to have timely rains in that area. If you want to see your egg photos on Ag Week TV, email your photo and a description of what's happening in the picture to photos at agweek.com. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com. We'll see you next week.